Welcome back to The Legal Brief, the show where we crush the various legal myths and misinformation surrounding various areas of the gun world. I'm your host, Adam Kraut, and today we're talking about the one law you need to know about that shields the gun industry from being sued for the criminal acts of other people. Daniel Defense makes some of the highest quality semi-automatic rifles on the planet, whether it's the V7, the ISR, or even the DD5-308, you can't go wrong. And from now until October 15th, you'll get a free Yeti Hopper Flip 8 cooler worth 200 bucks with the purchase of any Daniel Defense firearm. To learn more, check out the link in the video description below. The PLCAA, or Protection of Lawful Commerce and Arms Act, came into effect in October of 2005. Prior to its enactment, firearms industry members were frequently the targets of lawsuits for the criminal or unlawful misuse of their product. PLACA was enacted in order to provide industry members a legal shield from those lawsuits, which is why anti-gun politicians want to get rid of it. It was pretty straightforward to me that he was going to give immunity to the only industry in America. Everybody else has to be accountable but not the gun manufacturers. And we need to stand up and say enough of that. We're not gonna let it continue. We're gonna bring the repeal of PACA should be passed. Congress specifically found that businesses that are engaged in commerce through the lawful design, manufacture, marketing, distribution, importation, or sale to the public of firearms or ammunition are not and should not be liable for the harm caused by those who criminally or unlawfully misuse firearms products or ammunition that function as designed and intended. Congress also stated the possibility of imposing liability on an entire industry for harm that is solely caused by others is an abuse of the legal system. And we agree. We're gonna break this episode down into three parts. What the PLCAA is, a quick case study on PLACA, and thoughts in relation to the lawsuit recently filed against Slidefire. First up, what does the PLCAA do? Who is your daddy and what does he do? That can be summed up in one sentence. A qualified civil liability action may not be brought in any federal or state court. A law can't be that simple, can it? As you probably guessed, there's much more to PLACA than just one sentence. The definitions are the part where the majority of the analysis happens. We'll need to define a few terms like manufacturer, seller, qualified product, and qualified civil liability action. Now I know this doesn't sound like a lot of fun, but it is important in order to understand what PLACA protects. A manufacturer is, with respect to a qualified product, a person who is engaged in the business of manufacturing the product in interstate or foreign commerce, and who is licensed to engage in the business as such a manufacturer under the Gun Control Act or GCA. A seller, with respect to a qualified product, is A, an importer as defined in the Gun Control Act, who is engaged in the business as an importer and who is licensed to do so, B, a dealer as defined in the GCA who is engaged in the business as a dealer and who is licensed to do so, or C, a person engaged in the business of selling ammunition at the wholesale or retail level. So in the most simple terms, a manufacturer, importer, or dealer who is engaged in the business as a manufacturer, importer, or dealer and is licensed to do so is protected. Additionally, since there's no license to sell ammunition, a person selling ammunition at the wholesale or retail level is also protected. A qualified product means a firearm, any antique firearm, or ammunition as defined in the GCA, or a component part of a firearm or ammunition that has been shipped or transported in interstate or foreign commerce. Lastly, the term qualified civil liability action generally means a civil action or proceeding brought by any person against a manufacturer or a seller of a qualified product for damages or other relief resulting from the criminal or unlawful misuse of a qualified product by the person or a third party. As with everything, there's always exceptions to the rule. I'm gonna make an exception. Congress specifically defines six instances where a suit is not a qualified civil liability action. In the interest of time and ease in understanding some of these, they've been summarized. These six exceptions include, one, an action brought against a transferor convicted under section 924H of the GCA. This is the section which makes it a crime to knowingly transfer a firearm that will be used in a crime of violence or drug trafficking offense or a comparable or identical state felony law by a party directly harmed by that conduct. Two, an action brought against a seller for negligent entrustment or negligence per se. 
Congress defined the term negligent entrustment to mean supplying of a qualified product by a seller for use by another person when the seller knows or reasonably should know the person whom the product is supplied is likely to and does use that product in a manner involving unreasonable risk of physical injury to the person or others. We saw this theory being floated in the lawsuit against Bushmaster in Connecticut. Three, an action in which a manufacturer or seller of a qualified product knowingly violated a state or federal statute applicable to the sale or marketing of the product, and that violation was the proximate cause of harm for which relief is sought. There's actually a few more specific details about this particular section, and you can find those in the link which is down in the video description. Four, an action for breach of contract or warranty in connection with the purchase of the product. Five, an action for death, physical injuries, or property damage resulting directly from a defect in the design or manufacture of the product when it was used as intended or in a reasonably foreseeable manner. This doesn't include when a person intentionally discharges the product in a criminal offense. Or six, an action or proceeding commenced by the Attorney General to enforce the provisions of the GCA or the NFA. So again, those six points we just covered are when an individual can sue and PLACA won't apply. So we were just wondering if we could sue somebody. You can always sue somebody. All right. Simply put, in order to be protected under the PLCAA, the person manufacturing or selling the product has to, one, fall within the definition of manufacturer, seller, or trade association, which I didn't cover that definition, two, manufacture or sell a qualified product, and three, be sued by someone for a person's criminal or unlawful misuse. If none of those enumerated exemptions apply, the lawsuit must be dismissed. Okay guys, I know that was a lot to take in, and quite honestly, probably a little boring. Let's move on to the second key point here so you can see PLACA in action. As you may recall, the Brady campaign was behind a lawsuit that targeted Lucky Gunner for selling ammunition to the murderer who perpetrated the Aurora, Colorado shooting. You can find the court opinion in the description down below. One of the theories the plaintiffs floated to get around the PLCAA was negligent entrustment. Remember, negligent entrustment is one of those exemptions. The court outright rejected this argument, finding that the plaintiffs are required to plead facts showing the defendants knew or reasonably should have known that the perpetrator was likely to use the product sold to him in a manner involving unreasonable risk of physical injury to others, and they failed to do so. You have failed me for the last time. In fact, the only evidence the plaintiffs offered to show that Lucky Gunner knew or should have known about an unreasonable risk of physical injury to others was the quantity of ammunition that was purchased which the court dismissed, finding that there's nothing inherently suspicious about large internet orders. In short, because the plaintiffs could not meet the burden required to show negligent entrustment, the case was dismissed. And, the best part, the court ordered the plaintiffs to pay Lucky Gunner's attorney's fees. Denied. I provided a few other examples in the video description for you to read through. Now, on to our third and final key point. What does this all mean in relation to Slidefire and the lawsuit against them in regards to Las Vegas? As we talked about earlier, in order for the PLCAA to apply, Slidefire must either meet the definition of manufacturer or seller. Fortunately for Slidefire, they are type 07 FFL, which I believe puts them into the definition of a manufacturer under the PLACA. Which then raises the question, is the product protected under PLACA? I think the answer to that question is yes. yes. The Slidefire stocks, being a stock, is a component part of a firearm, so it's my interpretation that it would be a qualified product. As such, it would naturally follow that PLACA would apply. So a quick recap. The PLCAA was implemented to prevent people from bankrupting an entire industry due to the criminal or unlawful acts of a person or third party. In order to be protected under PLACA, the person manufacturing or selling the product has to one, fall within the definition of manufacturer, dealer, or trade association, two, manufacture or sell a qualified product, and three, be sued by someone for a person's criminal or unlawful misuse of the product. If none of the six exemptions apply, the case must be dismissed. Did you learn something from this video? Make sure to share it around with your friends. Don't forget to hit that like button, and if you haven't already subscribed, you better ring that bell. Check out my website, adamkraut.com, and as always, Thanks for watching.
The shirts worn in today's episode of The Legal Brief have been provided by Patriot Patch. Click the link in the description to learn more.